Oh, welcome. Welcome to today's video. Now, this is an interesting one because uh, it's off the back end of Ghostbusters 2020 or Ghostbusters Afterlife. The trailer was released yesterday. Here is my trailer reaction. Um, and you've got two opposing sides. I'm not just going to sit here and rag on the likes of uh, journalist James McMahon, uh, the very clearly raging neckbeard. Um, but there's also the other side of it, right? There's the the people that so vehemently, and I know some people don't like the way I say that, um, hate the Ghostbusters 2016 movie that they're just loving Ghostbusters Afterlife as, as a result of it as well. So there's two opposing sides. Um, and like I said, it's not just the likes of James McDouchebag here. Because um, there are some really stupid comments from the other side. But it just goes back to that thing like, Jesus Christ, guys. Like, it's a movie. It's a movie. You know? Like, uh, pick your battles. Like, you know, I, I get cross about certain movies here and there and things like that. Um... But, you know, we're talking about the ideology behind one movie here, which is causing two sides to get all rallied up and, and, and riled up against one another. So 2016's uh, Ghostbusters movie was rife with man-hating jokes um, and belittling men, right? It's no surprise. Um, that, that's, it's not a revelation to anyone that that's what that movie uh, had quite a lot of. Um, and it, it, it was very much ideologically based uh, in, in its production uh, as a result of that. So you then have certain, you know, the likes of James McDouchebag here, the, the raging neckbeard, very uh, clearly virtue signaling to, uh, to, to the kind of cause behind it when he says that he hates the new trailer because of people's reaction to the 2016 movie, right? But then you're, again, also, you have the people on the, the other side of it that disliked the ideology in 2016's movie so much so that they absolutely love the new trailer uh, as a result of that and hate, uh, you know, and use this opportunity to hate on the 2016 movie even more. Whereas realistically, if you if you took a look at the trailer, um, I think most people could agree that it's definitely a passing of the torch film. The new car, well, the old cast are not going to be in this film for very long. That's already confirmed. Uh, more like cameos. This is a coming-of-age love story with Ghostbusters in it, basically. Uh, this is Ghostbusters for a new generation. So I think anyone with any like half a sense would be able to figure that out. Um, so, you know, but the, the, the good thing about the trailer is that it does seem to respect the source a little bit more. But just these responses are it's just insane. Uh, and I'll try to pull up responses from both sides. But to get into it, all right, this this James McDouchebag. F that Ghostbusters trailer. You don't reward regressive fanboys, many of whom created an atmosphere of racist, misogynist, misogynist toxicity that led to a leading lady leaving this very platform by making the very film they wanted in the first place. Well, look, there's a few things to dissect there, mate. At the end of the day, it's everyone's choice to be offended by things. It's everyone's choice to leave platforms. Right? No one makes anyone do anything, right? You know, no one no one made her leave the platform. No amount of racist and misogynist behaviour forces people's hand. You can't force anyone to do anything. Um and not only that, you're you're supposed to be a journalist. You're supposed to be a journalist, but if you're stating F the Ghostbusters trailer because of people's reaction to the 2016 movie that doesn't really signal objectivity does it um there's nothing about your statement there which is objective now my opening you know my my, my statement about the trailer looking pretty good but being a passing of the torch etc etc so it's not really for me i would say it's quite objective it's quite objective it doesn't really bring any political bias into it to be honest it does however bring personal uh, opinions into it with the respect that it's a love it's a love story coming of age with, with children that's not for me i'm a grown man i don't really want to watch that um it doesn't appeal to me in any way shape or form so you're not really a good journalist there either uh james mcneckbeard douchebag 
Now, it continues in the most laughable way with Hispanic Pixie Dream Girl. Yes, that's what I said. Stating, and again, remember this is all about ideologies and it goes to show why just how the industry is currently flawed and how everything is currently just, it's all about ideologies. It's just, it's, it's very irritating. LMAO, of course, Ghostbusters Afterlife is about family and lineage and legacy and all these other effing white patriarchal American values. It's literally a reaction to the idea of four women, including one black woman. The franchise must assert its real predecessor. No. Um, it, it is probably capitalizing on the 2016's failure, of course, um, because, you know, you give, you look, I'm very much certain if you've had a real bad mouth, mouthful of uh, some terrible food, you're going to want to wash it down with something quite sweet and tasty, aren't you? And that's what this is. So yes, it is a, uh, you know, a capitalization on the 2016 movie, but it's, it's not a, it's got, I'm like, what? Effing white patriarchal American values. D do you think that America is the only people with the values of... I mean, what? You're saying that family, lineage and legacy are... You're saying it like they're bad things. Why is that a bad thing? What? Also, not to mention Matthew Rodriguez. If you don't like America, because I presume you live there... Fuck off. And I say that is universal. It goes to anyone living in the UK that seems to not like British values. Fuck off. Right, you do have the option. Don't walk around with a proverbial chip on your shoulder. Just because you're living in a place that you clearly uh, don't align yourself culturally with. It's just pathetic. Uh, and again, continues, you know, you've got the likes of Wired, right, who's a staff producer, Adam Lance Garcia. Who said, ha, huh, consider me intrigued. So he said he likes the trailer. But then goes on to say, this, of course, is not to discount Ghostbusters 2016. A film that was unfairly attacked, blah, 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 blah. By the worst worst kind of humans. Most of which were men. Because men are inherently emotional and irrational and get angry when women do anything. To which I say, go F yourselves, dudes. I mean, you, you didn't need to add that, did you? You did it for attention. Not to mention, mate, you're a dude. If you don't like dudes and you think, you know, emotional and irrational and angry, lob it off, mate. Chop it off. Chop your little ding -a -lang off. It sounds like you've got a tiny one anyway. Chop it off. Because at the end of the day, the, the fact that you feel the need to chime in on that is just virtue signaling trash. Uh, Julia Alexander, the new Ghostbusters trailer looks awful. Uh, and I'm sorry that we keep making Finn Wolfhard play Finn Wolfhard in, in a different city. I agree with the statement about Finn Wolfhard. Um, he really, he, he doesn't, just, no. Hire someone else. Um, the reason Ghostbusters 2020 looks better than Ghostbusters 2016 because this isn't about politics or gender. It's about the fact that the new film seems like a love letter made by a group of fans. And the 2016 film felt like it was made by people who had a free summer, which I kind of agree with. Um, but like I said, right, there's other comments up here. Um, let's go. So, man, if the internet hadn't made Ghostbusters such an exhaustive and horrible thing to be in the presence of, this trailer would have me going, ha, huh, this could be fun. But it's very clear that this movie exists because execs saw the man babies complaining and went, ooh, money. Which I'll agree with to a certain degree, but that's what Hollywood's about, mate. You know? That's genuinely what Hollywood's about. It's, it's a business, so of course they would. Uh, and there's there's countless of these comments. Like, it's just total balls and trash. You know, and you really do have it from two sides. You've got the sides of the people which are really, um, you know, really, really trying to absolutely poo-poo the Afterlife trailer. But then you've also got the other people that are really trying to poo-poo 2016 and just using this as a vehicle for that. I'm incredibly excited after watching the trailer for Ghostbusters Afterlife, but I wanted to declare in public that I absolutely love Paul Feig's 2016 Ghostbusters flick and wouldn't really like to have seen a scene. I would really have liked to have seen a scene. This is what I mean. Like, why, why? Is it just because you feel like, a, like aligned to that sort of ideology that you feel the need to 
to back up the fact that, yeah, I do like that trailer, but also, guys, don't worry, I'm still down with the other ideology, you know, I'm not choosing sides sort of thing. It's just weird. People just like what they like, let them like it. Anyway, I thought I thought you'd find this interesting. Go like we just can't have nice things, can we? <laughs> and I wouldn't even say the Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer was particularly nice. Like it looked pretty good and stuff like that. But it's just not for me. So anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know down below in the comment section if you're new here. Do hit subscribe. You can stay up to date on the world of pop culture, movie news, based on the bell notification icon. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Mr. H. Take care.